Today, we rank every capture in Super Mario Odyssey by how dangerous they are. Obviously, Mario is tough enough to survive controlling all of these enemies, but how would a normal person like us do in these situations? If we take over their abilities in their given area, which ones will leave us injured, which ones will leave us with death, and which are totally safe? Let's find out. First up, we have the frog. Now, being the first capture in the game, it's a pretty simple one. All it does is give us a higher jump, but just that presents a little bit of danger, because a higher jump means a higher fall. There's definitely a chance to get hurt with that in mind. Although the frog is a little bit more floaty, so even with a really high fall, it's not too bad, but I still think that's enough for this one to go and slightly painful. Next up is the spark pylon. We literally capture a bolt of electricity, and just by Mario's face, you can tell that this is not comfortable. This isn't just us getting a small shock, this is us becoming a superconductor and getting fried to a crisp, especially for how long we stay on the wire at certain points. This one is death tier. And the last capture for the Cap Kingdom is the Paragoomba. Now, when it comes to these flying captures, it's difficult to say, because usually we're going to be flying out over the void where you definitely don't want to fall. But there's always a chance of falling somewhere, so I feel like we can't fault the capture for that. But even if we are above the ground, there is still a chance of us falling from a good height. You could debate this one, but I feel like a good spot for it is Broken Bones. Now in Cascade, we have the Chain Chomps. Three different kinds, in fact. The normal and the big Chain Chomp are pretty much the same thing, and both of them could be hit by the other Chain Chomps around you. That's something to factor in, but at least we don't have to worry about the pain from flinging them, because that happens after we uncapture. That's why I feel like Broken Bones is deserving for these two. But then for Madame Brood's Chain Chomp, it's a little bit worse. Instead of worrying about other Chain Chomps hitting you, you have to worry about this bunny mother dragging you around and smacking you to prevent attacking. That really makes me feel bad for that pet, so I'm gonna put this one in major injury. Then there's the T-Rex. This would be dangerous by itself, but in Cascade, it's always sleeping. And once we actually do capture him, nothing can hurt us. We can run through all the enemies and break all the rocks here without a single scratch. I definitely would not feel this way if someone else captured this dinosaur, but if you're the one in the capture, you are totally safe. For the binoculars, this one seems pretty safe because you don't do a whole lot when you are captured, but they do have to shoot you up pretty high so you can actually see the stage, and that worries me a little bit. And then when you actually do uncapture and get brought back down, it's not just like a slow, gentle motion, it's pretty forceful. With that in mind, I don't think I can put this one in totally safe, but it's still safe enough that I'll put it in slightly painful. Classic one up next, the Bullet Bill. So here's my thing with Bullet Bills. In this game, Game, they explode. If you hit anything or just wait a few seconds, it explodes completely. So I feel like if you're controlling something and that thing explodes, there's no way you're surviving, right? The Moai seems a little better though, but I have noticed that when using him to find the invisible platforms, they're usually up pretty high. So there's a good chance to fall quite a bit when he takes off the shades. Probably not as bad as falling when you're flying somewhere though, so I'll say slightly painful for this one. For the cactus, similar situation where if we touched it, it would hurt, but since we are the cactus, we are totally safe, and we barely even move at all. What could go wrong? The Goombas also don't have too many things that I am worried about. I was thinking of saying slightly painful for this one because of the stacking, but they've been doing that for years, and clearly no one has ever gotten hurt just from the stacking process. And come on, it's the most classic first enemy in Mario games. I gotta say, totally safe. Nuclatex Fist. Now, this one does control like a bullet bill, but it never actually explodes while we're captured. Although, attacking does still seem pretty painful because we have to fly at full speed right into the boss's face. I know we're a fist, but that still can't be good for either party. I'm gonna say major injury on this one. Next up, we have the mini rocket to launch us into the clouds. Yeah, we can't just get in the rocket. We have to actually become the rocket. But what do we think? Well, I feel like flying up into the sky like this would not be 
safe. Sure, that is what rockets are meant to do, but not all of them are perfect. There's definitely a chance of an explosion or a malfunction that causes us to fall. I think I gotta put this in major injury. Glide on time. Another flying capture we have. Once again, we have to worry about injury from falling. If there is a huge fall, we can glide to slow down a little bit, but like I've said before, falling from a high place can still easily result in some broken bones. Now for Lakitu, I think this one's pretty easy. Usually he's a threat to Mario, but this time he just wants to go fishing. He's always just chilling in places where there are no enemies around, and he'll never fall because of the cloud. How much safer can you get? For the zipper, well, this one's a little weird to rank, but you are supposedly invincible while captured, and since you're always connected to the wall, what danger is there? I'll say totally safe for this one. Cheap cheeps. One of the best captures to make underwater levels fun, but how safe are they? Well, if we maintain our human abilities, definitely not, because we wouldn't be able to breathe, but since we've captured a fish, we have gills now, so we don't have to worry about that. And even if we assume that we can't breathe, it's very easy to just come back up to the surface. This one's also totally safe. For the puzzle piece in Lake Kingdom, I was originally thinking it would be totally safe, because you don't do a whole lot with it. But then I started thinking, what would happen if you were just standing up straight and then fell to the side? That would hurt, and probably even if we are a cube. So I'm putting this one in slightly painful. Next up, the poison piranha plant, because yes, you can capture them. And the whole thing with them is that they spit poison. So let me get this straight. We have captured a plant, so technically, in our mouth, there's just a lot of poison. Yeah, I gotta put this one in death because of that. Then for the uproots in a wooded, I feel like we've seen this before, where we're meant to take pretty big falls. When it comes to climbing the trees and the tower, that gets pretty dangerous. That, plus some other minor things you have to do with this guy, I'm gonna put this one in broken bones. Now the fire bro, which apparently is just holding balls of fire in his hand and getting ready to throw. You can't tell me that's safe. I might not know exactly how they do it, but there's gonna be a lot of burns here. That is a pretty major injury. Then we have the Sherm, or the tank, as everyone calls it. Let's think about this. If you're a tank, you're pretty powerful, but you can also still get hurt from the other tanks, or some other blasts that you might encounter. Tanks usually are the place where you can feel totally safe, but if you've captured one, there's going to be a lot of other powerful attacks around you. That's why I feel like I should say broken bones for this one. The coin coffer is also a weird one. Nothing about his appearance or abilities seem like it would be that bad, but there is the issue of spitting out the coins, sometimes pretty fast. That makes me kind of uncomfortable when thinking about it, but only slightly, so I'll say slightly painful. For the tree in deep woods, all you do is just hop a couple of times to either side and you're done. There's absolutely no danger at all. And same thing for the boulder. Like what, we just move six inches out of the way and that's it? We're also not doing too much with the picture match pieces in Cloud Kingdom. Even if we're making a Goomba, it's just a picture. There's no danger here. For the tropical wiggler, this one is a little bit tough because its main kingdom is lost. But without factoring in the poison, what's dangerous about this? Well, not too much because if we do stretch out, it's impossible to fall since you have to cling on to something. That makes it pretty safe to traverse around all these platforms. So it seems like it's a safe capture, but there is still death all around you. I don't know if it makes a whole lot of sense, but I'm gonna say slightly painful for this one. The poles in Metro seem to be a little dangerous because they can fling you anywhere. They could fling you vertically to up high somewhere, or horizontally where you could crash into something. I certainly wouldn't want to fly into a building after being catapulted. There definitely could be some broken bones from that. The manholes in New Donk City? I feel like there's also no debate here. Very small movements in a very safe area. But for the taxis, oh boy. There's only a couple of these, and they just take you to loading zones, but look at how fast these are going. Like, they just take off. If the loading zones weren't there, and we were just driving like this as a car, this would cause some major injuries to us. From a real car to a toy car now. Yeah, this one's totally safe. This one's much slower, has railings, and we're not even capturing the car this time, we're capturing the man with the controller, who is just standing there. Moving on to snow now, we have the Typhu. Yeah, all this guy does is float in the air and blow Mario. Once you've captured him, there really is nothing that can go wrong, except for falling afterwards. Although, that does seem unlikely, and most of them aren't that high up, so I'll give this guy slightly painful. For the Shavarian Racer, we do a lot of bouncing around. They are spheres, which are meant for that, but thinking of someone trying to complete this whole race course
horse while bounding around like that does not sound good. Probably gonna be some broken bones from that. And for the snow cheap cheeps, I'm also a little torn here because of course the fish themselves can survive in the freezing water. But I'm just thinking if you capture this guy, that's still gonna be really cold swimming underwater, especially when you uncapture and still have to be in this water that can literally hurt you. Honestly, death might be reasonable here, but I'll be generous and put this in major injury. Then we have the gushin in Seaside. Here's another issue of there just being gushins everywhere in this place, so you're pretty much always going to be attacked by another one. That being said, all they do is shoot water at you, which can hurt sometimes, but I can't imagine it would be that painful. And even if it does hurt, you can just fly right above all of them. I'll say slightly painful. Now we have lava bubbles. So in this capture, we're encased in a ball of fire and have to swim in lava or soup in Luncheon's case. This is one where I feel like even though technically you are the lava bubble, there's no way this isn't gonna hurt. There's just such a high chance of burning here that I'm gonna have to put this one in death. Awesome capture, but a lot could go wrong. But what about for the Volbonan? Volbonan? Vol Volbonan? The forks. The forks in Luncheon. Well, pretty safe in concept, but similar to the poles in Metro, this could lead to some danger after you fling out of them. Just think about how high you go with these in that one sub area. But I do feel like there's not as much to crash into here, and the forks are always there to catch you when you need it. I'm gonna say slightly painful. Hammer Bros. You know, the enemy that always killed you in Mario 1. Well, of course, if you were alone, this would be no big deal, but there's usually going to be another one trying to hit you. And just picture that for a second. Picture someone throwing a hammer, having it spin multiple times in the air, and hitting you. That could definitely break a bone. Then they there's the meat. Now you might think, oh, all we do is turn into a piece of meat on the top of the cliff. What could go wrong? Well, once you do that, Cucutiel picks you up and brings you over to the pot and drops you right in that boiling hot soup. Now you do jump out and stand on the meat pretty quickly, but there is still a chance of burning, especially with jumping across everything else afterwards. That is a major injury. Now for the fire piranha plants. This time, oh, wouldn't you guess it? They spit fire. Same thing with the poison one. Ones, if you can just spit fire from your mouth, how do you expect to survive that? Now we're off to Bowser's Kingdom with the Pokio. This one is awesome because they can scale walls, but for safety concerns, that also means that they get pretty high up. Although, looking at it closely, I feel like there's not too many walls here that are super high, and if falling is our biggest concern, I feel okay putting this one in broken bones. And then for the Jizo, all we gotta do is move around as a statue for a little bit to reveal some secrets. Honestly, Honestly, the most dangerous part of this one is falling through this hole, and that's barely anything. Come on, how dangerous can this one be? Then the Bowser statue. Pretty similar, except you literally move four steps to grab a moon. That's all there is to it. Parabones! Here's another flying creature. But this time, we're not in a peaceful place. Now we're in the moon cave with lava everywhere, and some of the lava can even shoot up at you as you're flying over it. Not to mention the tanks that shoot at you once you cross the gap. But at the end End of the day, you're still flying, so I'm pretty sure you could survive this. I'll put this in major injury. But what about the bonsai bill? Yeah, this one I am not confident in. I said it before and I'll say it again, explosions. But this time, an even bigger explosion. How about that? An even higher chance of death. Charge and chucks? Well, football players are known to have injuries because of the constant running into each other. And let me tell you, these guys charge fast. Running into a wall or one of their buddies could definitely leave you with some broken bones. Then we have the big boss himself, Bowser. Maybe if it were under better circumstances, it wouldn't be so bad, but this capture is only used while escaping the moon cave. Yeah, that place where there's lava all around, platforms falling out from under you, and rocks falling from above. This is all way too much, and honestly, it's pretty close to being in death by itself, but I'll be slightly more generous with the big man and put him in major injury. And now we have the letters in Metro Kingdom. Now you could say these are totally safe because all you do is move them into place to spell Mario, but I feel like you guys would not let me go past this if I didn't talk about the letter glitch. Yep, where we get the letters out of bounds to explore the city, and because of that, we can get hyperspeed and do this. They go insanely fast, they could crash you into buildings, and even fly off the map entirely. Because of all of that, I think I gotta put this one in major injury. It's just way too funny not to. Then these next two should look pretty 
slightly familiar. Metro puzzle piece, slightly painful, same reason as the one in Lake. And picture match part in Mushroom Kingdom, that is totally safe, same reason as the one in Cloud. And last, but definitely not least, we have Yoshi. How dangerous is he? You know, not that much. Probably the most dangerous part is you capture him on top of the castle and have to jump down, but there is the moat to break our fall, and we have his flutter jump. But once you're on the ground, it is just smooth sailing of eating a bunch of fruit and running really fast. And come on, it's Yoshi. He can't be anything other than totally safe. And there we go, that is all 52 captures. That was a lot to cover, so I'm sure I missed something. Let me know if there's anything that you would change, and also what other videos I should do. I love doing these rankings, so if you want more, I'll do more. But for now, that is all I got. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.